Call of Cthulhu is the latest attempt of bringing the work of H.P. Lovecraft to the modern video gaming scene. Now, there are many games that draw inspiration from the author famous for his works of eldritch horror that resonate with people to this day, but few games actually draw directly from Lovecraft's works. And sadly, many of the previous titles are not exactly bestsellers. Being an avid fan of his original work, in particular the Call of Cthulhu Mythlos, I have been excitedly awaiting its release and given the chance to experience the occult heavy horror I so enjoy. For those of you that do not know, this iteration of Call of Cthulhu is based off of the classic pen and paper RPG of the same name, and the developers at Cyanide Studios wanted this experience to reflect that as is told in the pen and paper RPG style of format. Call of Cthulhu takes place in the year 1924 and follows the downtrodden private investigator Edward Pierce as he is drawn into a bizarre plot on a remote island by his latest client. On this island his sanity is literally tested as he struggles with everything from PTSD from his prior war experience to alcoholism which seems to be his coping mechanism as his mind attempts to grasp or break, depending on your choices, at the eldritch implications. In this way, we have a setup for a classic Lovecraftian tale of eldritch horror that draws inspiration from the many of Lovecraft's greatest works, including the game's namesake and the shadow over Innsmouth being one of my favorites. Of course, there's much more to be discovered, and so much so that I don't necessarily think I could mention all of the tie-ins and Easter eggs that are hidden in the rather extensive texts and woven into the plot seamlessly. And sanity does play a large part in this tale being told, as depending on your actions, Pierce can either lose his mind or stave off evil and reaffirm his grip on reality. To this extent, this it is hard to tell what is real or not throughout your adventure, as whole chapters of the story may or may not have taken place, and the implications Sarah. carry over into four separate endings. This does lead to some replayability and some tense moments when faced with evidence painting? that breaks reality and haunts Pierce as his mind tries to come to grips with what he's seen. This, must have some this sanity mechanic features. is in truth one of the what best qualities uh, Call of Cthulhu has to offer, as you will constantly be questioning if something is happening or not. Or perhaps Pierce is literally losing his mind after all. Sarah Hawkins is on this list of Cyanide Studio has pieces. certainly done their due diligence in making sure that Call of Cthulhu is definitively a Lovecraftian story. And I would certainly consider this a success, even if many other aspects of the game tend to fall short. As I stated previously, Call of Cthulhu is based off of the classic pen and paper RPG. And in the same fashion, the video game is set up as a very basic RPG, with a limited skill tree and points earned through character interaction and puzzle solving used to flush out different traits for Detective Pierce to interact with the world around him. Unfortunately, the RPG elements are rather superficial, and I found that you can still complete any piece of the game and interact with any character or, or puzzle despite not having the proper stats to do so. Sure, you can possibly get slightly more information out of an individual if your psychology score is high, but it does not affect the story in any major way, and in fact, most of the endings don't even require it. And this can be said of any of the stats outside of occult and medicine, which do come up often enough to war make them more worthwhile, though they have a different method of leveling than your standard stats as you have to actually find lore books out in the world to upgrade them. On a whole, the RPG system is rather weak and honestly could have been dumped out entirely and no one would have been the wiser. But that is not the only flaw with the more gamey mechanics of Call of Cthulhu. There is also a very basic stealth mechanic in place at certain points in the story, and unfortunately there are combat encounters, which normally I would be all for. Though, through the nature of the story being told, combat is supposed to be avoided, and managing lantern oil and keeping hidden from occultists and orderlies does seem appropriate for the story to begin with which I do agree. The way in which the stealth is implemented is 
very rudimentary and no honestly way. slightly more hey. annoying than fun when it comes to actual gameplay. There are a handful of boss encounters where it makes sense, but for the most part, most hooked. of the stealth mechanics are bland and not very well used. You're never quite sure if you are hidden or how far away an enemy can see you from. With this being a first-person game, hiding from enemies becomes more of a chore than anything. But that could also just be my own personal bias, as I'm used to more streamlined stealth mechanics of modern games such as uh, Alien Isolation or Resident Evil. But if the stealth mechanics is subpar, the combat system is archaic. At certain points in the narrative, you have access to weapons, and it is honestly beyond disappointing. I don't want to necessarily ruin it for you if you are trying to save yourself from any spoilers, but there is a brief FPS section that resembles a mechanic pulled from the original Wolfenstein era of games from the 90s. No crosshairs, just line up the screen and bang bang dead, move on to the next. Needless to say, it did not bring anything to the narrative and I would have been happier with what even a more here? stealth section than what you are forced into doing. Now, on the more positive note, Let's start over. the puzzle mechanics of Call of Cthulhu are top notch. Like they don't hold your hand, and many of the platforming and detective reactions uh, rely on common sense tall, and a decent memory to progress. Man, but they're not impossible. The best example I can think of is a puzzle in an rather eclectic bookstore to open a safe that has you scouring the small place for clues to the combination that at no point is actually ever given to you. You have to figure it out for yourself. There's no piece of paper you find that says, hey, this is the safe combination. And the recreations of past events in Pierce's mind, which also has a lot to do with his... Uh, sanity level, is something more akin to the detective visions in the recent Batman Arkham games, is very well animals. done and also intuitive. What happened in all, I found the puzzles extremely enjoyable and one of the highlights of the game next to the insanity mechanic. Now, Call of Cthulhu is published by a much smaller studio in Cyanide Studios, and I don't exactly expect a triple A experience when purchasing a game from a publisher of this caliber. Not saying anything bad about Cyanide Studios, but they just don't have the funding of EA or some of the other major influencers in the video game um, media right now. But I do expect there to be a decent fluidity to the technical aspects of the game, especially if it's going for a premium of $60. The voice acting throughout the game is very good. It's phenomenal, in fact. And the actors hired for this did an excellent job telling the story. However, the facial animations, especially when not in a cutscene, are very poor. Almost something we should have seen 10 years ago on an old school PlayStation 3. In fact, the same can be said for most of the graphics and textures used. I found them all kinds of bland and several times I had textures just not load, leading to an awkward graphical tear that just took me out of the experience. I'm not saying that I need top-of-the-line visuals to make a game enjoyable, but a game that so heavily relies on conversation and character interaction and mood should have a much more consistent and updated feel to it than what we are presented with in Call of Cthulhu currently. This could all be, of course, possibly fixed with patches, but I do suspect that it goes deeper than that. Especially since there are four different endings requiring multiple playthroughs to see them all, it is difficult to sit through the same awkward looking conversation of a man with a hole where his beard should be despite the phenomenal voiceover. Or at least it has been for me. As a whole, Call of Cthulhu is an interesting and entertaining story set in the Lovecraftian universe. Despite some technical deficiencies, it does deliver an excellent story and very much embraces the Lovecraft mythos in a way not many games have. The puzzles are challenging and the actual narrative is chock full of mystery, treachery, and eldritch horror. It is a phenomenal story 
but a lackluster video game, which does sadden me. I do enjoy this insanity mechanic, though that has been done in games before, but they do do it in an interesting way, so I will give them that. For this reason, I'm giving Call of Cthulhu a 6.5 out of 10. A great story, but held back by technical difficulties, and some very forced, uninspired gameplay mechanics, which does make me a little sad, as I really do enjoy the story being told, and I would recommend it for fans of Elder Tor and all things of the occult. But other than that, I would wait for this thing to probably go on sale or get you a, uh, a used copy cheap. As always, guys, I have been Jumbo Thick. Thank you very much for watching and listening to my thoughts and opinions on Call of Cthulhu. If you have not already, I have a full playthrough of the game uploaded to my channel. And feel free to leave me comments on what you think about the game in the comment section below. Perhaps I was too harsh. Perhaps I wasn't harsh enough. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section. And as always, have a good day.